what is this? We have the uh, FIDE Online World Corporate Chess Championship, February 19th to 21, starting at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, 16 o'clock Central European Time. Um, okay. Carlson to play in the FIDE Online World Corporate Chess Championship. There's an article by Peter Doggers, uh, published this morning. Um, the FIDE Online World Corporate Chess Championship will be held February 19th to 21st, 2021. The first edition of the championship has big names such as GM Magnus Carlson, Jan Nepomniachi, Vladislav Artemiev, and Anish Giri among the participants. How to watch. <clears throat> um, the games of the FIDE Online World Corporate Chess Championship can be found here as part of our live events platform. Daily commentary will be available on chess.com forward slash TV. More details can be found on chess dash results um i'm not competing i probably will do so i'll probably do some coverage of, of some of the games um but i'm not competing it was too last minute and um and there's a, there's a lot of other stuff that i was busy with um so i'm not actually competing all right so let's keep going the inaugural edition of the fide online world corporate chess championship an online online team competition for companies has a surprisingly large and strong turnout <clears throat> with a total of 284 teams from 78 different countries registered, the event will bring together 1,467 players. The list of participating companies includes giants like Amazon, S Samsung. Well, Amazon, I mean, may maybe maybe as the stock went up, I would be more optimistic about their chances. Um, Amazon, Samsung, Ford, Microsoft, Gazprom, Facebook, Siemens, Dell Technologies, Bosch, Airbus, IBM, Boeing, Sony, Intel, Arcelor, Mittal. Equinor, HP, Twitter, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Vodafone, Sparebank, American Express, Deutsche Bank, UBS, Oracle, Credit Suisse, and Airbnb. <clears throat> so, all right, first, first, um, first, first, uh, FIDE Online World Corporate Chess Championship, February 19th, 21st, 2021, online platform chess.com. Why does that that chair looks a that chair looks a lot like my chair? I was looking at the chair. That chair looks a lot like my, my chair, so I was just making sure it's not the same chair. Um, and they didn't just steal steal my chair and put put it uh, in this image. Um, because then they would have to pay me money for stealing my content. Anyway, um, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> um, okay. The the lineups of the teams are fairly impressive as well. By the way, before I keep going, this chess set really upsets me. This triggers me. This is not the, this notion of this chess set having all these pins, like these little dots on top of every piece, is not how it should be. Like there should not be this little dot on top of the pawns and on the rooks and and on like the queen. Um, that's not not how it should be. Like the bishops have the points, but the pawns never do and rooks never do. So th this chess set is very um, this chess set is not 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 an appropriate chess set for this image. All right. Let's keep going. Um, the lineup of the teams are fairly impressive as well, especially nice as the participation of the world champion who represents the company Kindred, the online gambling operator of Unibet that has been sponsoring Carlson since early 2020. Geary is logically playing for Optiver, a Dutch trading firm that has supported him during the past five years of his career. Other top players are playing by invitation as companies were allowed to have one invited player for the, for the event. In total, 204 title players will take part in the competition, including 36 Grand Masters. All right. Um, so, you know, Magnus is playing this again. I will say this. I've said it before, and this is nothing against Magnus specifically, but um, but I do not believe that gambling and chess is something that is a long term vision that can happen, because in terms of the structure of chess events, I do believe that um, that the the, the odds of, fi of match fixing become very high relative to the amount of money you can make off of betting on chess versus actual prize funds so um so i am very skeptical in 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 general in a general sense of gambling i don't think it's uh i don't think it's going to happen um and i'm i'm very very uh very bearish and very skeptical overall um that 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 will happen <clears throat> um so so that, that's that's what i would say and that's why i'm very skeptical about the notion of gambling and chess um anyway um not magnus on each is playing for optiver a dutch trading company makes a lot of sense um i blundered my queen plus a hundred thousand dollars uh i mean like i said i'm i i i have deep um i have deep reservations regarding gambling and chess i i do i do have very i i have very serious reservations and i think there are a lot of very serious problems that could arise um Anyway, okay, other top players are playing by invitation as companies were allowed to have one invited player for the event. In total, 204 title players will take part in the competition, including 36 Grand Masters. Okay, so Magnus playing. Anton Korobov is playing the, for the Spurbank Trade Union in Ukraine. Jan Pomniachi also playing for Spurbank. 
Um, Vladislav Artemiev is playing for Aeroflot. Very nice. Anish Giri for Optiver. Radoslav Wojtaszek for COIG. I assume that's a Polish company. I'm not familiar with them. Um, Dmitry Yakovenko is playing for Yandex. Now, a lot of these Russian companies that are playing the event, they actually are sponsors in the Russian Chess League as well. So I think players like Yakovenko, he might already play for this play for this team in um in the uh, in the Russian Chess League as well. So I'm not not 100 sure on a couple of these Russian ones because th th I think some of these these uh, these companies are actually um, are backers in that league as well. Um, Salem Saleh is playing for the, for Emirates. Is that like the uh, the airline? That's that's a that's a pretty sweet gig if he gets something out of it. Like if he can if he can um if he can fly like fly business class with Emirates, it's pretty pretty sweet deal. Um, so that's that's pretty nice. Um, uh, Vladislav. Uh, or no, not sorry, not Vlaslav. <clears throat> um, um, Vladis Vla Vladimir Malakov playing Alarud Law from now. Vladimir Malakov is a very un sort of um, uh, uh, he's a very sort of understated grandmaster, very strong player, but I think he actually is like a professor or a lawyer or all kinds of different things, but his rating in chess actually is 2670. So um, he is a very, very strong chess player, but he has a lot of, a lot of things going on outside of chess. So he's like a, he's a true five head. Um, then you have Georg Meyer, 2651, playing for the Grenka Bank. Now, Grenka, by the way, they are a main sponsor. There's a Grenka Chess Festival uh, almost every year in February or March held in Grenka. So this also makes sense, Georg Meyer being a German player. He's played in that event, and he's playing for Grenka Bank in this, in this event as well. Um, <clears throat> there are also some top executives playing for their teams, like Bernard Spalt, CEO of Ursa Group Bank, and Tomislav Topic, who is the CEO of the telecom company Telconet in Ecuador. However, the strongest executive is two-time French champion and former top player, GM Joel Lotier, a member of the supervisory board of Sovcom Bank, who will make a temporary comeback to play in the championship. So Joel Lotier also, um, the only other the only other grandmaster um, in the world, I believe, uh, maybe not the only one, but the only other really notable, very strong grandmaster who is also of Japanese really descent. I believe he is half French and half Japanese originally. Um, so he is the only other uh, uh, really strong grandmaster of, of Japanese descent. Um, so Joel Lotier is playing as well. Um, so really, really good stuff. I'm not playing. Wesley's not playing. Um, what I would say before I keep going with the article in terms of why I'm not playing is I was no one ever reached out to me. I mean, sure, there's a Google building right down the street for me. And um, and obviously my Google calls have done very well for me, um, but they didn't ask me and um, and nobody else asked me either. So, hey, what to do anyway? Um, let's let's keep going. <clears throat> uh, format. Um, each, each team, uh, the format is each team consists of four players, including at least one male player and at least one female player in each team. Only one player can have a standard rating higher than 2,500 in the FIDE rating list for November, 2020, uh, registered teams are divided into two pools, East and West of approximately equal strength and of close time zone. Right. Because of course you're going to have, you're going to have teams and you're going to have teams and, um, you're going to have teams like in America, like you have the West Coast, East Coast, and you have teams in Europe. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, because at least this way with East and West, nobody gets shafted like like Ding Loren gets shafted every 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 three weeks in the in the Magnus Carlsen tour. Um, so pool matches are played on February 19th and 20th. Qualified teams enter the playoff phase played on February 21st. Um, the Eastern pool matches begin at 7 a.m. Pacific, 16 o'clock Central European time. The, the Western pool matches begin at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 2.30 a.m. the next day, Central European time. The time control is 10 minutes plus a two-second increment for the whole game. Um, <clears throat> so let's keep going. Donations. There is no entry fee of any kind for this competition. However, FIDE is organizing a fundraiser in cooperation with the platform. Soft giving and participating companies are encouraged to donate towards one of three social projects currently being developed by FIDE. Chess and Education Programs for Underprivileged Children, Chess for People with Disabilities, and the FIDE Veteran Support Program. If you also want to contribute, you can do it through this link, and there's a link below, um, give.softgiving.com forward slash FIDE. <clears throat> um, all donations received through this link uh, will count towards the leaderboard offered by Softgiving. The most generous donors will appear on top of the leaderboard. Donation amounts won't be revealed. At the end of the event, the team that has donated the most funds for those charity causes will be invited to the FIDE World Championship match um, 2021 taking place at Dubai World Expo in late 2021 with accommodation expenses covered for three nights and VIP tickets to attend three rounds of the match. 
Um, <clears throat> Darren underscore just subscribed. Just picked so, up the chess and money. Very, very good. Um, it's really good to see this initiative that's We've going on. Um, looking forward to it. Went now, again, it's a great event. As I said before, I was not I was not asked. And frankly, I think that when they were putting this event together, a lot of us were playing the Magnus Tour. So, so many things going on. Um, but yeah, I won't be playing it. I may do some commentary on it. But at any rate, it was really good to see, um, see Magnus and Anish specifically playing. Radoslav is playing for COIG. Now, one thing that I was going to add, since I see that someone says this, is um, I saw the other Polish player. I'm sure there are a lot of Polska Guram people in chat um, who, um, who would be familiar. But in the last Magnus Carlsen Tour event, uh, I saw that Jan Christoph Duda was wearing a shirt um he was wearing a shirt that had logos on it and i'm not sure if coig was one of them but i think it was so if there are any people any any polish people in chat who could confirm or dis or or or, uh, or unconfirm that it, that would help because i saw that um i saw that uh that 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 dude i was wearing uh, he was wearing a shirt that had some kind of real real logo on it um so i don't i don't know uh um anyway all right Unconfirmed? Okay, it's unconfirmed. All right. Um, Lime just subscribed. All right, so pretty good, pretty good stuff. This is February nineteenth, twenty first. It will be at seven a.m. Pacific time, ten a.m. Eastern. It's going on, so that's that's uh, that's that's what's going on. Good, good event. It's for charity, of course, as well. So very good. Um, oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. You know what? Okay. You know what? I actually I accidentally scrolled down to the comments. Okay, I'm gonna read this one comment. I didn't realize. I just saw. I just I saw this bottom line. And so then then um, I'm gonna read this comment. On the long term, it will bring more money into the chess world. So it's a good move regarding popularizing chess. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if I should be happy or sad regarding the direction our hobby is going into. First of all, if it's a hobby, if you're gonna if you're gonna you know to be very technical about this, if you're gonna call it a hobby. Um, then I don't think you really should have a vested interest if you consider it a hobby. You, that's the wrong word to use there to describe chess if you're, if, if you're going to have such a strong opinion. So it should not say hobby. It should say my passion or my love. It should not say my hobby. Because if it's a hobby, hey, you know, you know I, li I like to go out fishing. Does that mean that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like be an elitist about, oh, you can't use this kind of pool or you, you can't use this kind of bait. You only use live bait. You can't lose, use fake bait you know, or, or dead bait or all these other things like – I mean, it's a hobby. I love it, but am I, am I going to go and gatekeep it? No, because it's a hobby. It's something I might go out and do, but that doesn't mean that um, that doesn't mean that like I like I feel passionately about it. So honestly, this wording is wrong. It should not say hobby. Um, is going into. We already have all these pog champs and attention hungry streamers who provide entertainment but no content. Even watching Nakamura, who just shakes his head on the rhythm of what you can hardly call music, playing Endless Bullet is nothing more than a waste of time. Just makes the viewers burn another a bunch of brain cells. Exciting. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, that great comment, whoever whoever wrote that comment. Um, that is that is fantastic. Uh, you know, I find it I find it hilarious that I'm I'm an attention hungry streamer, first of all. And then secondly, um, I play Endless Bullet. First of all, we have sub battles, we have viewer arenas, we play blitz, I play in competitive tournaments, and hey, but you know, I everybody loses brain cells through through the through the education we try to give them. But hey, who am I to complain? You're just a Naka hater. That's what you really are trying to say. Also very true. Um, great stuff. Great, great stuff. Yeah, no content. I know, totally no content. Um, but yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> okay, I don't... You know, what I would say, though, in general terms... Um, you know, what I would say in general terms as well... I'm not, I'm not going to go through more of the comments. Um, is, is that... Uh, is that it is very good for chess and you want to see more money in chess because money in chess and, and you know i don't want to make this political because i don't want to get into like you know uh what's it trickle down trickle down econ so chess i don't want to get into that but subscribe. i do think because chess is still so small there is actually a lot of trickle down there is a lot of flow through and um to me when i see what's happened with chess on on twitch when i see people like anna Cramling and i see people like crick or mechatarian who who have who are sponsored they're part they're part of orgs like that is as good as it gets that's really what you want is that that there are other people having success it is not just the top chess players for a very long time the only people who have ever been able to make a living from chess are people who are the top competitors um who are playing these very elite competitions so to me i actually like 
when people get mad about these sorts of things, like about the, the direction it's going in, they have no right to get mad um, because everybody, everybody is uh, making a career and making a living out of this. And it's very good for chess. It's very good for a lot of people who, frankly, um, might be in a lot, lot different circumstances if, uh, if not for this. So to me, it's just very, um, <clears throat> it's just very out of touch with reality. And, um, and, and that's, that's, uh, it's, it's disappointing to see that people continue to take that, but Hey, what to do? That's life. A rising tide lifts all boats, all, all boats. Exactly. Totally, Cap totally Saunders, true. Just subscribe. All right. Um, okay. So in the meantime, before I get moving along, um, dessert pay gold donated $3. It is I, I'm, I'm, I'm to hearing claim that maybe that XUC won't be able to play as match today. Um, your stream is very educational. <laughs>